So, um, this handsome fella here went to retcon with another handsome fella. Fortunately, some ugly fella can join us. Could they, Nigel? No, I don't do football things. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you missed a good day. You missed a good day, Nigel. Yeah, so we went to... and, and the weird thing is, I went into my work on Tuesday and I went to uh, the kitchen that we got there. And on the on the board, somebody had pinned up an, a flyer for retcon. Oh, just to rub it in. Yeah. No. Oh, we and might have seen them. Salt in the wound. And whoever oh. had seen that, whoever put them up had probably gone to retcon. Yeah, I, was, I don't know who it was. It was Gareth. <laughs> Yeah, Gareth's been in my work. Drive all the way. I, I, I drive twenty miles to your work just on the off chance. Um, Nick, Nick <laughs> McKee to get in. Nick Smith, Bob. Oh, that's I am gutted. Brinder. I missed it. It did look good. Uh, for those of you who are listening, if you go to Bap Stars well, YouTube video, he goes uh, and shows you. Uh, oh yeah, you're playing a little bit there, right? Um, that's that run in the background. Yeah, so. You can watch his little trip. Right. Gareth's right, voice is in it, but not his face. Right. Can I just point something out? Yeah. I, when I saw this, I was expecting you to go, we're in a car. And then go, <laughs> that'll oh. be it. I was expecting that when I saw that. I was like, oh, great. Is he going to do that? And he didn't. But that's fine. No, because that's, that, that's, I'd be copying you, wouldn't I? I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how we did our video to come up and meet you. Mm. Which, was, yes. which was really good. So, so that's, retro, yeah, that's got... retro Robbins. Shout out to Retro Robbins there. Who's that's kind enough to buy me lunch? Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So yes, um, yeah. Oh, I missed to, out on lunch. To... Oh damn it! Missed out on a free lunch, Nigel. I had a free Sorry, lunch mate. at the football anyway. Well, we need we nearly didn't have a, a free lunch, but we'll get to that. <laughs> so um, went there. They had some speakers on there. The only ones I was interested in was the Oliver Twins. You turned around and said to me, he goes, when you've heard one Oliver Twins speech, you pretty much heard them all. And Retro Robbins agreed with you. So I'm like, well, I haven't heard one. Yeah. I want to hear one. If I heard the one, then I, I, don't, I can yeah. avoid it next time. That's fair enough. So I went up there and they went, well, we're trying something. And, and you left. And the moment you left, they went, we're trying something different this time. We're going to try and see if we can build a game in four hours. And we need some ideas. So, being the... What's the polite word? Being the pain in the ass that I am. <laughs> they asked for ideas. And they were like kind of, oh, set it in the desert. Set it in the castle. Set it in Europe. And I'm like kind of, well, oh, dude, set it, in an Ar set it in an Argos where you've got a, 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 an interdimensional warehouse where you can get mad things from. And they were like, okay, we'll write that one down. And it's funny because they were going through all the things and people were voting and they thought that the interdimensional Argos was the interesting one. And I've done this, I've, I've brought this up on the on the Monkey Nut Punch podcast last weekend. Um, but they were like, we're going to put it again, put this game together. It has to be a narrative driven game. It's not like a platform or anything like this. It's like one of these, you see them, it's like kind of, they always seem like um, soap opera games. That's yeah. the best way of describing it, a game if it was a soap opera. Yeah. Does that make sense? Hmm. So they were building one of them, but I thought I'm going to make this. it. Yeah, or kiss the, the the person, or tell them you love them, or just leave them be quiet. This sort of thing. Um, so naturally, I was like, I'm going to make this as hard as fucking possible for them because <laughs> one, if they, the one was the if you. I think I think it was Retro Robbins who said to me because are oh, oh, they probably just pre-made something? And I was like, no, 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 no. They need to make an Argos game. <laughs> There's no way that they pre-made an Argos game. Uh, and funny enough, uh, they didn't finish it on time because I hung, hung around to about four o'clock to see if they'd, they'd present it. They they were still working on it. Um, I tweeted at them in the afternoon. They tweeted back to, in the evening. They tweeted back at me. Um, it was released onto the um, Rich Cast Media app under the community tab. It's called Argos Magic. Um, so they did do it in the end. I haven't played all the way through it, but... It was quite mad. I also competed in the FIFA FIFA ninety seven tournament, and I couldn't see the screen. I think I did exceptionally well, considering I lost on Golden Goal. Was that in that? Was that in um, that room there? The FIFA tournament. That, 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 that's the TV screen back there. I was playing. I played against some rando. Um, I couldn't see the screen whatsoever because it was outside and it was white and uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, shadowed 
you put in shadow very well. But the guy was coming around just asking, he goes, how many people you got? He went seven. I want old to come in because you need an even number. Yeah. At least. You do. Um, so Normally you do for uh, need an even number for a football, football game. Yeah. Um, or a tournament. Did that. That was quite good. Um, uh, I played really badly because I couldn't use the stick for... What were we playing? We played Street Fighter. Oh, we, we played Street Fighter. I think it was Alpha 2. Or it could have been Alpha 3. And then we played Mortal Kombat, didn't we? Which I couldn't pull any of the moves off on. Which was really annoying. Because I can it does, I can pull the moves off with my eyes closed. And I'm just... You were saying, this, saying that the drift on the stick was terrible. So I'm yeah, going to yeah, say the stick on the drift was terrible. They're, they're cheap um, Chinese uh, mechanisms. Oh, they knock off. <laughs> They're not really knockoff. It's just what you buy. It's what you what you buy from eBay if you, you go for like a just a cheap setup. I've I've used them for um, uh, Raspberry Pi uh, coffee table machines. I've built up, and and they work fine for that a little bit of arcade experience. But for for precision control, you need um, you, you need like a jammer control set, a proper arcade one. So you can actually feel, and it's very tight. So you can feel where all the uh, micro switches are. There's just too much travel for the cheap ones. But uh, but that was, uh, I mean, Gareth was just coming out of all the excuses under the sun because I was thrashing him basically. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, Sh shoulders oh. and oh, the joystick's not working and screen's gone off. Uh, this is right. So, this was the other thing too, because you were practically drooling over these, mate. I was, yeah. Commodore like, sixty four. I, I was watching you. You're like kind of. I saw you like reach. I go get, grab my wallet. I want to buy one now. You can't buy one now. I was like, why can't I buy one now? Yeah. They showed you the, the the cool screen, which is like a cube thing, which is being shown there. Um. Yeah. You you were. Absolutely drooling over it. I think I, I, I was standing next to your son and went, keep an eye on your father. I think he's going to buy something. Yeah. That, that um, was a program they wrote specifically for for this system, which I thought was cool. It's it, like a new. It's, it's, it's like a new computer. It's it's yeah, a new uh, it's a new injection molded case. Um, so it could be a Vic twenty Commodore sixty four, Commodore sixteen case, bread bin case. And they've just literally put a mini ITX PC in there. Yeah. So um, it will be a processor with the onboard GPU. Because obviously you're not going to fit um, a huge graphics card in there. But they, they'd also designed um, a cooling system for the case as well. So you've got um, two, two fans going to a huge heat sink that runs the length of the case and then um a exhaust system to yeah. blow all the hot air out because they, they were warm that but they were getting rid of a lot of the heat um the the drive the drive that they were using they were using m.2 so that again that keeps it nice and compact and um obviously memory there was um one 16 gig chip in there so it was a very very nice tidy system but uh, yeah yeah there, there's your prices yeah not cheap at all not cheap but um you could literally just buy the case and the cooling system and the key keyboard and then just just buy your own parts over time because uh, they're, for, re they're readily available. The parts are readily available. For for our podcast listeners, uh, the bare bones... Oh, you've just moved away from it. Sorry! <laughs> our podcast listeners go, cannot see this. Um, I know they can't see this. Bare bones is... Early bird is $135. VIP is uh, 119 Extreme, 456 and also the ultimate which is a thousand and ninety nine dollars obviously this is on is this indiegogo or is it on kickstarter uh this is kickstarter yeah so you can find the 64x 
Commodore on Kickstarter to have a proper look through and what you actually yeah. get. Yeah, so it is it is an impressive piece of kit. It really does look like a Commodore 64 as I remember it, but they do them in multiple colours and so forth. Yeah, mm. I, and w one thing that I'd noticed was there was little sunken parts of the plastic at the front. Oh, you... <laughs> But it's but it's where oh. it's where the posts are for the screws. The yes, for the screws. So I asked him, has that been resolved? And he said yes. Um, it it was more noticeable on um, the darker coloured cases. Yes, but they do a translucent one as well, which looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. many many colours, many many colours. Looks good. Yeah, we also so was, we also uh, played. We also played Quake. We did. They two? Quake two. They Quake. they they'd set up a. Uh, it was a land setup. I think there was six machines, and uh, we all played Quake two deathmatch. Um, you're right there, Nigel. Shoulder. That's that's a thumb now. That is that was then. <laughs> um. So that was that was good fun. Um. It just again shows you that the the old. First person shooter deathmatch games, they're still king, they still play so well. Need some footage now. Yes. Some randos, I have no idea who these people are. So I know that you've got your specky friend there. He always sounds really weird so specky friend. With his glasses, he's a specky friend. Well the um, the the guy on the on the left there, um I know this is no good for the podcast listeners, but he was a veteran uh, Quake Two player from back in the day and you've got oh. richard sherman there uh he's uh involved in the spectrum next community you've got retro wayne robbins who's got his own youtube channels for retro gaming and uh and you've got my son there as well who's uh enjoying playing quite too but yeah great little setup that was yeah it was um had fun with that they had a lot of other stuff there i have to say you, I know that you complained about the the the, the lack of food options. I did. Uh, I think my biggest problem was the lack of the heat being dissipated because you got all those things switched on. Downstairs and like the main hall was fine, but when you got up into like the because you had like the the other room where you had that Amiga. Yeah. That we sh I think you showed Nigel before we started the one with the clear case. Yeah. And that room was I was melting in that room. I th I think you're always gonna you're always gonna have issues with that i mean it was a hot day anyway wasn't it it wasn't just the fact that it was hot in there because of all the old kit um it was a very hot day anyway um but uh yeah the the commodore amiga that they uh one of that one of them had on display translucent one brand new motherboard all in purple that was incredible to look at that was what have you got and then I think, where is it? Do you? I was playing, I can't remember what game I was playing on it. I was playing on that because that was fun. I can't find it. I see, I don't get any footage. They also had, oh, there it is. Yeah. So there you go, the Commodore. That is a lovely bit of kit. It is. Now, the, the cases, again, the cases were a Kickstarter. Um, the keyboard options, they were a Kickstarter. Um, I think I asked the guy what accelerator was in there, and I'd never heard of it before. Because you can, you can get an accelerator card called the Pi Storm, which is like one of the cheaper options, which is just literally a, a plug-in, and then you put a Raspberry Pi Zero in it, into it, and it turns you oh, into a powerhouse. Um, is that you or me? Sorry, connection just dipped out for a second there. Okay. Um, Still there? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. So, don't normally have these problems. It's, um, okay, cool. It's we, I, I had fun. There were some cool bits in there. It was. Um, it, was it was a great day, and uh, I was contacted afterwards um, from the from the organisers, and they they're putting it on again next next year. Um, they actually have a, a regular computer club at that um, community centre. So that's why they decided to do it because that—that's only the third third time they've they've done that event. 
Uh, given given the COVID situation, meeting up was almost yeah. illegal. So yeah. I think that's a good my sign. Only, my, my only complaint, complaint, and it was only a little one, was the fact that there was no there was no proper there was no proper food on. Um, it was just literally. Um, what it was just pop, tea, coffee, crisps, and chocolate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, could have done with a burger van or some kind of street food van outside, but uh, we, we managed to find a, a greasy spoon calf. That's another interest. What, what you can see on the screen now is a is an old A pet, and that's uh, that's got a modern PC inside. I was there trying well. to find that in the clips, so yeah, it was yeah. Uh, that was cool. All right. Great day. Well, day. it's a good day. Yes.